hear this. You are not alone. This is the resistance. Right. Go by status class as opposed to not not even status class. Go by job. We'll go go as the importance of a job. Your social status <clears throat> is determined by your job. Right? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It can be determined by intelligence too. You can, uh, let's just put this for instance. There's a guy that when I was working at Saboba Casino, okay, homeless. Okay, he used to come in with a backpack all the time to Saboba. He was escorted in with with security guards and escorted out with security guards. They used to close down the poker room for a single hand of blackjack with this guy. This guy would put down $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 at a time. Nobody knew this guy had money except for the people that escorted this guy in. But he had and a that, social class. Is that homeless, that old homeless guy who runs around collecting cans? No. No, no. This guy is rich. Okay? Nobody knows about him. He, he has, he's like, he's a homeless guy. He prefers to live on the road <coughs> because he doesn't want the government to tax his money. He doesn't want the government to take his money away, stuff like that. Now, this guy comes in, he plays one hand of blackjack. If he wins, he leaves with his winnings. If he loses, he leaves without his, his winnings. He plays one hand. Okay? Now, this guy, if you look at him, homeless. You know him personally, different story. You know he has money. You know he has, you know financial status. He just doesn't flaunt it around. Now, see, that's all about interpretation of what you see in somebody, too. I'm not talking about social status, and I'm not talking about your job being your social status, because that's not necessarily true. <clears throat> you could be a very intelligent person and be homeless. It doesn't, you know, you, you could be a very, very good singer and be homeless. You could have, uh, you know, the most amazing gift to, to uh, you know, do magic tricks and, and be homeless. You could be uh, a genius engineer and be homeless. Uh, all because you didn't have the means to go to school and stuff. But what I'm talking about is the people that have the important jobs, the people who protect us, the people who teach us, the people who fix us when we're sick, the people who, you know, um, help you when you're down type of deal. These people should be the people that have... The, the better cars, the better, you know, the better houses, the, you know, the more um, things in their house to fill their house up with. Then you have construction workers, you know, the middle class, the, the backbone of our community. They should have the middle class houses, the middle class cars, you know, and, and these things should be given to them and allotted to them. If something breaks on it, it should just automatically be fixed because that generates more jobs for the lower class lower class being mechanics, you know, so on and so forth, uh, you know, trash pickup, uh, gardeners, maintenance, uh, you know, different things like that, restaurant, workers, restaurant workers, fast food places, you know, stuff like that. And that's what I'm saying is that if everybody worked for the betterment of society, we'd be way better off. Well, I will agree with you if people work for the betterment of society rather than manip manipulating the system for gain, the world would be a better place, as they say. If you remove the money from politics, the world will be a much better place. And I agree with you in that sense. And you make a lot of good points, and I'm sure some other viewers will agree with you on many points and disagree with you on others. And then there will probably be those who disagree entirely. And that's their prerogative. And that's kind of what this video series is about here. To prompt thinking. You know, everybody has their own opinions, like we've discussed many times. Opinions are like assholes and they all stink. Everybody's got one. Yep. So, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't think for yourself. You know, I'm not saying that people shouldn't have their religion or belief in something or even entertain the idea of the existence of aliens or anything. Believe what you want to believe. But at the same time, be mindful of facts and don't confuse the two. Don't confuse theory with fact. And if it's a theory, try to seek to prove or disprove it. That, and that's what TWBRN and a lot of activists do. We look at these, quote, conspiracy theories, and we research the facts. Okay, 9-11. Those towers shouldn't have fallen. Concrete doesn't burn. Those towers were each designed to take 
uh, it, uh, two airplanes, and yet those things crumbled. You know, all, all those stuff. Look at the facts. And that's all anybody can do is look at the facts. You really want to get into 9-11? <laughs> we, we could get into 9-11, but, you know, that I think we can save for another time. But I think you and I are both on the same page as far as what's going on in the government today is totally whacked. Regardless of the reasons why it's whack, it's obviously whack and something needs to be done about it. And as far as religion goes, I, I it used, probably does play a great part. I used to believe in my country and my government and stuff like that, but nowadays if you don't go by the rules and regulations of the way things were laid down when we were first founded. <coughs> innocent until proven guilty, now it's guilty until proven innocent. I mean, you get, lo you get locked up just for being under suspicion about doing something wrong, you know, murder or whatever, even if you didn't do something wrong. Um, <clears throat> I get the reason for that, you know, it's so that you don't flee the country and you get away with it or whatever. I get that. You want to catch the bad guy. I get that. Yeah, but at, at the, the same, same time, time, too, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. And, and, and that's where the biggest problems have come into play here. Manipulation of the system. Because the door does swing both ways, it is a double-edged sword, just like with money. People say money is the root of all evil. No, it's a fucking weapon and it can be used for good or for evil. It just depends on who's wielding the weapon. Exactly, and unfortunately the people who are wielding the weapons right now are incompetent assholes. Either that or they're <coughs> extremely fucking smart and their intelligence made them sick, twisted fucks, like the old saying goes. The most intelligent people on the planet are also the craziest. Right. Most eccentric, too. Yeah, well, greed. Greed is a very powerful thing. The more you have, the more you want. And that's where fear comes into play. You know, the more you have, the more you have to lose. And I think that's what probably started this whole new world under agenda. People had so much, and they wanted so much, and they fear losing all that they have and all that they could have, that they decided the best way to keep what they have and what they plan to get is to enslave the rest of mankind. If you're the king, king should have turned the mountain, you want to keep everybody else from climbing the mountain. Yeah, but, off your pedestal. but even then, not all people are driven by greed, you know? No. <clears throat> but for those who are driven by greed and have all of that, that's how they think. Thus, by proxy, they think that's how the rest of the world thinks. So, so you're you, they're you're using the their own paranoia, and you're using the expression "one bad apple destroys the barrel." Uh, Same because one person acts like this, everybody acts like this. Uh, as far as the individual perception goes, if you're a good person, you try to see the good in all people. If you've only ever been around good people in your life, you're not, and have never been exposed to anything other, then you're going to think the whole world's that way. But if you're a greedy, sick, twisted fuck, and you have grown up and associated only with other sick, twisted fucks, then you're going to assume that by proxy the rest of the world is that way as well. And if you're the 1% holding all the money and all the power and all the other shit and you have that mentality, you're going to want to make sure that the rest of the world who doesn't have it can't get it. Right? Some people think that way. Yeah, some people think that way. See, it, but the more money I have, the more money I give away. I, it's not the more things I buy with it. I, Me and my wife, we discuss this all the time. We think we're here to help people. And that's our true belief. I mean, we help people all the time. And just because we have money doesn't mean that we're going <coughs> to keep it to ourselves and be selfish with it. Yes, we have financial issues sometimes, and we do have to keep that money to ourselves. But that's just so that we can support our family and help ourselves first. Because if we're not helping ourselves, how can we help others? Exactly. And in that terminology, if more people thought that way, then there would be... Once again, betterment of society.